what's the world going to look like in 20 years in terms of energy if, you know, it seems like we're pretty focused on this. I wouldn't say like we're as focused as I'd like to see it or maybe you'd like to mm -hmm. see it. I would like to see us be like a uh, Manhattan Project level focus, mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know, like on this issue. But right. it seems like we're not going to, that's not going to happen. Yeah. But if we continue at this place, uh, this pace of what I'll call, you know, good focus as a country, as a planet, we're pretty, we're pretty, that's maybe a seven or eight in terms of how focused we are. Mm -hmm. If we consider that, can continue that way for 20 years, what's the world going to look like in 20, uh, 46, mm. no, 2036, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what will the world look like 2036. in so, 2036 in terms I mean, of energy? Right, right. Um, I mean, to, to start going back to that Bloomberg study, you know, there'll be a three plus trillion dollar solar economy to we start. We know that, so yeah. That's, so a lot some, of money at stake. Yeah. Somebody's making a lot of money and... You know, there's 1.5 billion people around the world right now that don't have access to electricity. And another billion, yeah, t about 20% of the world's population. Wow. Another billion people who have intermittent access. Hmm. So the kind of innovation that's happening now, even when it's starting in the States and it's applicable to our lives, there are services and products that are being adapted for emerging markets. Yeah. And, you know, we saw in that study, you know, a billion worth of, a trillion worth of value is going to be created in those emerging markets. So, um I'm I'm really excited about the future. I think despite a lot of the the doom and gloom that we hear on the climate change side, and that's very real, there are also entrepreneurs working every day on solutions that will allow everyone around the world to power their lives with sunshine. And that's really exciting. It's going to really take all this stuff going on in the Middle East. You know, there's a lot of strife and people living in like the religious era <laughs> and the rest of the world's kind of like, oh yeah, no, women and gays have rights too. And But like the oil has kind of given them a pass. What's going to happen to those regions, do you think, like when, if solar becomes the dominant, you know, majority force, which is what we're all predicting, right? 20 years from now, it will be the, the, the dominant force of uh, electricity uh, creation. What happens to the Middle East, do you think? That's a great question. Um, I mean, I think so much of the the peril that we've seen in the Middle East yeah. is climate related. Yeah. You know, it's, it's droughts that disrupted the agricultural system, which caused people to leave their homes and go to the cities and there was unrest in the cities and that created a lot of the migration mm. crises that we're seeing now. So ultimately, this all does come back to climate and it does yeah. come back to energy challenges, but also energy opportunities. Yeah. And that, you know, that's what motivates me every day is to work with people who, yes, they have an interest in making a lot of money, but they also have an interest and a passion for doing good in the world and for making a difference. And when you put those together, I think we're unstoppable. Yeah, I'm really optimistic about it. I think solar is just tremendous. And like, if if we really get these panels dialed in at the same pace we're doing, like, I don't know, is there, is there going to be another 90% decrease in cost? Or are we getting towards the end of that train? I think we're getting towards the end of the the cost reductions we'll see in hardware, but the yeah. cost reductions in software have only just begun. And Got that's it. what our focus is right. at Powerhouse is to reduce those soft costs and to see the same dramatic reduction that we saw in hardware in software. Because water, clean water is really a function of energy. Like you can do these... Um, I mean, you can do desalinization. That's just an energy issue. And then this uh, ability to take water from the air. What do they call it? It's a big fancy word for it. But anyway, to capture water from the air, uh, that's also an energy issue. And mm -hmm. we could actually solve water. Um, and if you solve water, I think you kind of solve agriculture. They're absolutely interlinked. And even solar is interlinked there, too, because so much of uh, energy goes to agricultural uses, pumping water, water irrigation. So, yeah, the, the solutions all overlap. And, you know, every, everything we do in our lives is powered by something. And right now it's powered by fossil fuel, but it's beginning to transition to being powered by renewables. So whether it's agriculture, the studio, or people who are listening, your laptop right now, yeah. your phone that you're listening to this podcast on. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, I could talk to you all day about Squarespace. I love this product. All of our sites are built on Squarespace. Why? Because I can just say, hey, Bryce, hey, Ashley, hey, Jackie, just change this on the Squarespace site. Hey, can we get this up on the Launch Festival site? Hey, can we get this up on the Launch Mobile site? Hey, on the Scale Conference, on this, on that. It instantly gets done. It's easy to use. Squarespace makes beautiful websites so, so simply. They have all these great design templates. You pick one, and all of a sudden, it looks like you spent a quarter million dollars on your website. Literally, these designers are, I mean, a lot of designers are very upset. A lot of web shops are very upset about Squarespace. I've seen this many times where they would normally spend, you know, people would spend $20,000, $50,000, $100,000 on a website, and Squarespace does it 
for dollars a month, like $10 a month. It's unbelievably affordable. And everything, it starts at eight bucks a month, by the way. Everything is responsive. So when you pull it up on your iPad or your phone, you have to pinch and zoom to see the website. It all just works. And you're not at, you know, uh, you know, bent over a barrel by all these crazy developer freelancers who then disappear for months. They go, you know, uh, on a hike and they go bike across the United States while your website still isn't responsive or still isn't working. You need to have a professional group behind your website, and that is Squarespace. They also support uh, e-commerce now, and they just keep adding features. Like they have a calendar feature that's really good right now, and there's all these little plugins and little, you know, craftsmanship that make the site look so good. I love the product. You can start your free trial today with no credit card required, and when you decide to sign up for Squarespace, please use the offer code TWIST to get 10% off your first purchase. Squarespace, build it beautiful. Build it beautiful. Please, please, it's a lot of ugly stuff going on in the world. A lot of ugly websites. Just use Squarespace and make the world beautiful. That's not their tagline. But I love beautiful websites. When I see a beautiful website for a conference, I buy a ticket. When I see a beautiful website for a product, I buy the product. When I see a beautiful website for a service or a startup, I want to meet with them. Go to squarespace.com and have a great, beautiful website. It's trusted by millions of people, including some of the most respected brands of the world. Their art, their technology is state of the art, secure, easy to use, scalable. You don't need to have a developer do it. I could talk for days. Thank you, Squarespace, for being one of my longest running sponsors for This Week in Startups. I truly appreciate it. It means a lot to me. Um, okay, let's get back to the program.